Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Henry Confidential, and that is Austin Pez Howell. You can just call him Pez, because uh, we're going to be ranking stuff, as you saw the the name of the show, because... I feel like we're two guys that just want to talk about movies, and when we talk about movies, we want to kind of talk about our difference of opinions and kind of compare compare and contrast stuff, and uh, you know, I feel like ranking things is the easiest way to do it, you know what I mean, and, and also just gives us mm-hmm. a chance to just banter back and forth, and but kind of stay on topic, so <laughs> ranking things. Uh, <laughs> so what better off than doing uh, my personal favorite franchise of all time? I'm not sure where it ranks on for you. I'll ask you that in a second, but uh, the Rocky franchise. Mm-hmm. So I figured e- easy one. There's only eight movies. So uh, what, what are your thoughts about the concept of this show, and what are your thoughts about uh, Rocky as a franchise as a whole? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm excited to be to be doing this show, and I'm excited that you know we're going to do a format that yes, we're going to be ranking things, but not necessarily have like hard numbers or hard uh, uh, formats. It's just like let's pick a topic, let's pick a director, let's pick a franchise, let's pick a uh, you know a subgenre or whatever, and let's just pick whatever we want and let's rank them, you know, and just have a little fun and just express our love for these topics. And yeah, uh, you know, what's funny about the Rocky franchises. You know, it doesn't immediately come to mind when I think of my favorite franchises uh, offhand. But then when you stop and think about it, uh, I've loved almost every one of these movies uh, since I was a kid. And it's one of those ones I've seen a lot of them dozens and dozens of times. And it's just such a consistently fun and entertaining franchise full of a lot of great life philosophy and great characters and just great themes all around. And it's just kind of the whole package. And, and to me, again, it's been one of the most consistent franchises uh, you know, around as far as quality. And I think you're going to see that when we kind of start talking about these movies individually. Absolutely. Uh, without, without, you know, getting specific movies, I'll say uh, out of all, when you think of franchises as a whole, you think of like you're talking mm-hmm. about these and there's um, at least one or two common themes that are, you know, spread out through the entire eight movies. And obviously you'll see we, uh, we linked in the, the Creed movies as well. So it's not just the Rocky, it's the Rocky and Creed. So the fact that mm-hmm. you're ha- you have carry o- carry- you're carrying over these themes and these concepts in technically two different characters and it still you know stands mm-hmm. true to what you're doing, that, that shows the weight of the franchise and you know, why it's my personal favorite and why I connect to it. And obviously why, it, like you just said, it, it wasn't your first thought process of your top tier, but when you really sit back and think about it, you're like, man, it, it, it might be. It's up there. So. <laughs> You're like, man, I've been I've been enjoying these movies for a long time. You know, it's one of those things where you're probably the same where, you know, every time they're on cable, it's like if I'm flipping around and I see a Rocky movie, it doesn't matter which one. It's like, you know what? I'm probably going to stop and watch a good chunk of it, if not just get sucked in and watch the whole thing. And then if they're running, running into those things where it's, oh, we just showed Rocky 2 and now we're going to show Rocky 3. Well, damn, well, there goes my whole day, right? I mean, and, and there, the there it goes. Closer to 90 minutes, you know what I mean? Like, you know. Oh yeah, they fly by. Yeah, the Creed movies are longer, but all the Rocky movies are under two hours, and a couple of them are closer to ninety minutes. So it's like you can just watch them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's so much fun. So mm-hmm. without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what is your number eight? My number eight. I I know it's gonna hurt you a little bit based on our kind of initial uh, roundtable that we did, but uh, and you you probably know what's coming, but unfortunately. Uh, uh, I, even though I rewatched it uh, a few days ago, um, it's still going to be Rocky Five. It's still my number eight. Now I want to preface this before before you <laughs> start, you know, uh, you know, jolting in your seat because I know it's one of your favorites. Um, I don't flat out dislike any of these movies, and it's even the stuff near the bottom of the list. I I, I still enjoy these movies and even Rocky five, I find a lot of things to enjoy about Rocky five. To me, it has the most flaws in storytelling and things that I don't connect with as much and things I think are done better in other installments of the franchise, which is why Rocky five kind of ranks the lowest for me. Some of the, and, and so, I mean, just to get into it just a little bit, um, you know, there's stuff, you know, there's themes about, you know, the, the kind of crux of the plot where it's Rocky connecting with Tommy instead of connecting with his kid. But I think the whole connecting with his kid thing is done a little bit better in Rocky Balboa. I think uh, Rocky financial problems are done a little bit better in Rocky II. Uh, there's, you know, Rocky training somebody is done a little bit better in Creed. I think there's just things that are done a little bit better in other installments for me personally. Um, there's a lot of great ideas in Rocky Five, that I just think 
Um, editing wise, uh, the pacing of the movie just leaves to me something to be desired. There's not a lot of room for things to breathe in Rocky Five. I think, you know, I, I'll give you a, a perfect example of, of when Tommy kind of joins up with with Duke. It's like an hour and ten minutes in the movie. He wins the title. Rocky's watching the fight. Rocky goes to the bar. There's the press conference. He immediately goes to the bar, challenges Rocky. They have the final fight. Movie's over. Like, it flies through the climax. Like, flies from Tommy winning the title all the way through the climax. And we don't get a chance to breathe on any of the events that have happened. I don't feel Rocky's redemption with his son is really flushed out at all, other than a few quick lines and a few quick moments. Um, again, there's things that I like. There's individual scenes that I like. I think the George Washington Duke character is one of the great characters of the franchise, honestly. Uh, I think it was a character that was needed at this point, like a kind of over-the-top, crazy, you know, cuckoo promoter that it plays both sides and manipulates people and is just in it for the money and will almost like a, a wrestling manager or something will just go to whatever's hot, you know, whatever he can make the quick buck off of, you know, obviously much like uh, Don King back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I think Tommy Morrison does a good job with Tommy Gunn. Like I, I do like the character. I just think the character changes are, are too quick. You know, they're not really fleshed out. Like it's just, it's too quick the way he kind of just turns on Rocky and they don't get a chance to like really develop a lot of that uh, in the second half of the movie to me. And the first 15 minutes is just so rushed and wonky with like the timeline and the way he loses his money. And just, we got to get him to Philly. We got to get him to Philly. Like by any means necessary. And once they settle down into Philly, I'm, I'm more into the movie kind of in the middle chunk. But to me, it's just, it's, it's, it just, it's a little, you know, it's a little too stunted. Again, I think the movie's breezy and entertaining. I don't dislike it. I just think it has the most kind of flaws of, of all the movies. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, uh, Rocky Five is my number three. Yeah. This, this no, I knew that was kind of, I knew I knew it was high up for you, so, so I, I didn't want you to be disappointed. But, uh, again, I don't dislike it. Yeah, absolutely. So my, the reason, and that, that's going to shock people, people, might, you know, if you haven't turned off the video at this point, you know, because I've lost all credit. <laughs> Give him a chance. Yeah, hear, yeah. hear him out. Hear him out. Give him a chance. <laughs> so the, the, the two reasons why I, I don't even want to say defend Rocky Five, but just genuinely love it and honestly don't really care what other people think is um, mm -hmm. why, why I love the Rocky franchise is Rocky himself, obviously, but the relationship between Rocky and Adrian. And I feel like this movie gives that opportunity, um, those two opportunities, moments to shine that are just true heartfelt moments. And, um, there's another scene with Adrian that I'm going to talk about later when it comes up, but the scene when Adrian monologues and she's yelling at Rocky in the street talking about being there for your son instead of being there for Tommy. You're and losing your son. Yeah. You're losing us. Um, You're losing your family. Talia, Talia yeah. Shire it just, just is fantastic in that scene, and, it, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a shame that you know we don't get to see her in Rocky Balboa because of you know as she grows and develops in the entire series she just becomes she goes from that that you know shy girl who's never been in a man's apartment before to you know being a full-fledged wife and mother you know what i mean like she is you know what you think of when you think of you know like Apollo Creed's wife you know what i mean how she 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 was there you know what i mean like that's what you want and that's what you get by Rocky 5 but at that point he's retired you know what i mean so she's not really like the boxer's wife anymore she's the retired boxer's wife essentially so she's kind of put on the back burner in terms of that you know level of heightened you know um, character wise but that's that scene is fantastic and that that's one of those scenes where no matter what no matter the mood i'm in when i'm watching that just that just gives me so many chills because she just delivers it fantastically and the other one that i'm gonna talk about later as well and the relationship with the concept between rocky like what uh, everyone everyone talks about the the financial stuff with paulie and everything you got to think about the themes what i was what i was hinting at earlier uh the themes in this movie that stay consistent paulie is consistently i don't want to say asking for a handout but essentially asking for a handout and he and Rocky's just such a nice guy, and he, and he wants to, you know, not not to say provide charity, but you know, you know, give to the ones closest to him and the people he cares about. But also, you know, not really branch out to managers and stuff. You know, honestly, think about when him and Mickey got together. That happened just kind of because Mickey came to him because Mickey used him, and we'll talk about that later. But like Rocky's always stayed close with the people that you know are in a circle. So. Of course, he's gonna give Paulie the opportunity to manage his money, and of course, Paulie's a moron, and he and he's been trying to do different things on accounting, like you know, um, 
advertise the the meat market on on the on the robe in the first one and you know and then just so on and so on like that's always what he's done he's very irresponsible and he's dumb and you know he's a bum so he screwed up and that's how they use that opportunity because at that point he he's been the champ you know for a long time and he just saved saved america in four you know what i mean so you know, it gives them an opportunity because when you really think about where you're going to go in this franchise without it getting repetitive and stale and really why this franchise, why a lot of people love Rocky Balboa is because of what happens in Rocky Five, how you're able to peak and valley character wise because you can't stay at the high the entire time because then it's going to get stale. Three are repetitive, but they have enough tweaks that it works by, you know, throughout from start to Rocky Five, it's a completely different movie because this is the first time he's being a mentor. So the fact that he had everything taken away from him, that's the reason why I believe, you know, you, you really need to strip that down and bring him back to his roots of having nothing. Because just like in, in Rocky two, after he gets all his money, he's selfish. I mean, it's not selfish, but he's very stupid with his money, just buying things. and He's not investing in all that stuff. So you, you just know he's not really smart with his money. So he can't trust himself with his money and he's not really trusting outside of his circle. So he uses Polly and Polly, you know, you know, he's a bum. So that, that's what that, and everything with his son, it's it's one of those things where it's at no point is Rocky a bad father because he tries his best, but without a father figure in his life, he's trying his best without having any idea what he's doing. So he's really he's just what it is. And his son has no interest in boxing at the time. So when he gets a chance to kind of, you know, develop a new son in Tommy Gun, he it's just his instincts, his natural thought process is, all right, let me do this. Because every, every time, you know, Robert comes in there or kid or, you know, whatever they're calling him in five, <laughs> who knows, you know, I, I think at one point he's credited as Rocky <laughs> yeah, yeah. in one of the movies. But <laughs> but anyway, so when he, he's, he's like, oh, yeah, he's like, cool, cool. Tell me about that. All right. But yeah, we're going to get back to training real quick because like boxing is his life because at this point he is officially retired he's done so like now he doesn't have that but he still mm -hmm. he is a boxer he doesn't have boxing he is boxing so he's trying to fill that void and he used that with tommy gun and tommy gun mirrors rocky because rocky think of how many fights rocky had before he got a shot so many and that's tommy gun and when rocky got his shot fighting the champ he skyrocketed into stardom and that's essentially what happened with uh, Tommy Gunn and you know towards the end like you said they rushed it but it's not about Tommy Gunn it's about their relationship and that's why I feel like that was put on the back burner and why they they turned it in, into that fight because that you got to have that that uh that that climax and that conclusion of that storyline of like this is what Rocky would have been if he didn't have Mickey in his corner and if he didn't have a true genuine heart unlike Tommy Gunn. So I think the parallel of it's essentially, you know, the evil Rocky or, you know, like I said, what Rocky could have been. And that's what Tommy, Tommy Gunn was. The potential's there, the heart, the grit, you know, the great fighting and the, the lack of, you know, you know, real training. So once you get that, he, he rises to stardom because that's all he needed was the real training. And then the mindset is, and the heart is what truly separates the two. And I feel like that's why I, just, I love Rocky five yeah. so much. And um, it, it really kills me that even Stallone, you know, disowns. It. And I feel like the pressure of this, the fans, you know, it not being Rocky four, two essentially is the reason why, you know, at the time people diss it and people just either don't go back and give it a second chance or people are lower on it. And which is fine. I don't mind being low on it, but the people that think like it's the worst movie of all time, that that's crazy to me. Cause I no, like, no, no, that's, that's, that's stupid because yeah, because like, like I said, once I got past a little bit of the wonkiness of the beginning, uh, especially on this rewatch, like the the chunk, the middle chunk of the movie, the 30, 40, 40 minutes, like I was I was pretty into it. Like I was I was digging it. Again, I just feel like like they get to like Tommy splitting with Rocky, and then it like rushes eighty miles an hour to the climax, you know. And it's just like I feel like there's no room. To, like that's another movie I would love to see like an extended cut with just some, some room to breathe, you know, like a couple of those moments to kind of let sit. Cause again, there's great ideas that they bring up and great stuff about, um, you know, dirty boxing promoters and like, uh, and, and how, how that business can corrupt you. And they, they touch on it a little bit where Rocky's yelling at Tommy. He's like, Mickey protected me from the, that dirty part of the business. Like he protected me from that. Like, like he didn't let me get corrupted, you know, like that, like I, you know, cause Rocky kind of becomes, you know, a, a corporate guy, but like he doesn't get corrupted by promoters. He doesn't get corrupted by, um, you know, you know, too much greed, you know, things like that. He's still like a dude, you know, a respectable dude or, or whatever. And uh, like, again, yeah, there's things that, that, that I like, but I, I'd be damned if I say it didn't have one of my favorite moments in the entire franchise when Tommy punches out Polly and then he just turns around and gives him that look and goes, 
now you knocked him down. Why don't you try knocking me down? <laughs> and then, of course, the my ring's outside. Like, you're just like, whoa, okay. Like, we're getting back to, like, some old school. Like, we're going to have a brawl. Like, yeah. like we're going to have a – like, and, and, and it's, feel, like that's awesome. Like that's why you needed to go back to Philly. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, brings, mm -hmm. it brings back yeah. that because at, at that point, Rocky is a superstar. You know, he's, he's not just mm -hmm. a, a world champion boxer. He is a superstar. He's a celebrity. So you kind of have to you mm -hmm. know, bring, him, bring him down to – his roots and come full circle with this character. So um, Rocky mm. five is my number three. And that is your number eight. And I feel like out of all of them, that that is probably going to be the longest, like in-depth discussion because I needed to defend it. And you wanted to kind of, <laughs> reasons, you know, why you're well, no. That. And, but again, <laughs> I defend it as not as bad as people think yeah. it is. You know what I mean? I defend it as still, I think an entertaining movie with some good themes. There's good moments. There's some good scenes. I just feel it's the weakest out of this franchise. But again, being the weakest of this franchise that is so consistent like with with good stuff in it i think is not a, necessarily a, a huge slight against the movie that's all i mean exactly and uh so mm -hmm. I, yeah the, the biggest the biggest point i'll say is if you're watching this video you're probably a rocky fan and if you haven't revisited mm -hmm. uh, rocky five i recommend it and mm -hmm. also if you've never you know watched it with the thought process of the things that i said maybe maybe go in with those eyes and see see if it changes mm -hmm. and uh you know comment below if uh if that happens so we're gonna move on to my number eight and my number mm -hmm. eight is going to be controversial in its own right because it's some people's number one or it's some people's number eight, or I wouldn't say eight because pretty much universally everyone says Rocky Five. unfortunately, is their number eight. So it could be the mm -hmm. lower end. But uh, my, my number eight is uh, Rocky Four, And this is the only movie within the Rocky franchise that is not a five-star movie because mm -hmm. I have not watched the director's cut, the, the new one. And based now on we might get to that. We might get to that later because I have a radically different opinion of Rocky Four. I'll just exactly. I'll just put so it that way. Based on what yeah. you told me, my issues with mm -hmm. Rocky Four could bump it up, and I'm not. I'm it honestly. I it could. I I really don't see it going above seven at this point. But that's not once again similar to what you're saying on Rocky Five. That's not a slight on it. Do you, it, it at seven at at a five star movie for me. It's still. I think that's fine. You know, what I mean, this is my favorite franchise of all time. So yeah, yeah. The only one that's not a five star. It's still a four star movie. Like I still really like it, and at the end, I still yell America. Yeah. You know what I mean, and also without this movie, you don't have what you get in Creed Two, which eventually we'll talk about. You know what I mean? So it's like it 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 carries a lot of weight in the character, and, and it gives a it gives a an interesting. Thing like once again, it's one of the things my issues with this movie. Um, Apollo Creed's death. It's it, there's mm. there's it's emotional, but I feel like it's lacking something. As much as I care about that character, and as much as I love you know Apollo Creed and Carl Weathers' performance and just persona as that, I feel like there's just something missing. And you know, you touched lightly on what the director's cut is. Watch the director's yeah. cut. Exactly. Watch That's the director's cut, which I was watching right before we started this show again for the third time. I was watching, and it, goddamn, it, does it, it work way better in the director's cut? Exactly. Dude, I almost shed a tear. I'll just exactly. put that. That's I'll just what put I'm that. Yeah. That's just one of my issues with it is I feel like it, it's something as traumatic and epic in the franchise that happens. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like when we lose Mickey in three, it, there's there's a mm -hmm. moment there where you really have – because this one's in the middle of a fight. It's just – you know what I mean? It, it's I don't know. It's just missing mm -hmm. something. So And then obviously you know the, it's only 90 minutes and you know there's three, two or three montages in it. You know, it's it's real frantic and crazy, and you know, it's it. There's the fights are fun, and like I said, at the end, you want to yell America, and you feel real patriotic. But truly, you know, there's no depth to Drago. He's just he's just a faceless villain. You know what I mean? He doesn't really say much. You know, he he grows and creeps. Not in the director's cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, where, where where do you have? Rocky we'll get to that. Well, 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 okay, okay. I'll talk about Rocky Four right now in context of the theatrical cut because that's you what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Right. So because even the patriotism aspect of it is way toned down in the director's cut. It's not about patriotism and standing up for America. It's, it's more about Apollo and it's more about doing the right thing. So I'll, I'll say that. But anyways, as far as the theatrical cut goes, um, if, if I was to rank the theatrical cut, which I did not, I, I will, we'll get to it, but, but you know, I, I'm, I rank Rocky four, but, I don't know. I'm taking this new one as canon, basically, but yeah. <laughs> but I know you haven't seen it. But it, it, you know, the theatrical cut is still, it's still really entertaining. Um, you know, I, I I get the complaints that it's very uh, like a music video. You know, because there's tons of montages. It's very flashy. It's very over the top. Uh, you have all the, 
you know, the sillier aspects with the, with Paulie's robot and some of the silly stuff with the kids, you know, what do you think we are nerds? Like, yeah, punch it, punch it. Oh my gosh. Like that stuff bugs me, <laughs> but like, it's not good. Um, but you know, but I think, I think Drago is still, even in the theatrical cut, he's got this presence that you're just fascinated by that you do want to know more about that character. And that's why I was so glad. Um, and I'm, again, we'll talk about Creed two when we get there, that they expanded on his character in Creed two and kind of the aftermath and made him, you know, this human being. And, uh, but, you know, I do think even at the after cut, I, I like the fact that Duke gets a chance to really shine, uh, Paolo's trainer, you know, uh, gets the chance to kind of come to the forefront, be like a head trainer, get some really great moments with the, with the no pain stuff. You know, he's not a machine, like even just during the training sequences, like just the way he like looks at Rocky and it's just like kind of, you know, nodding his head and shaking, you know, like I just, I, I dig that stuff. Um, the stuff about, uh, Rocky just, you know, telling Adrian, he just, you know, let, you got to let me be a man, you know, do what I got to do, you know, but, you know, I, I like their staircase scene where she's like, you can't win, you know, she's genuinely scared that he's going to die too, and you get where she's coming from, because it's like, you know, <laughs> he just killed your friend, like, what do you, you know, now you're going to go fight him, and you're going to go die too, you got a kid now, you got, you know, there's things, things going on in that thing, so, um, yeah, I still enjoy Rocky Four as a, as a fun kind of breezy movie, um, again that needed some tweaking, which I'm glad we we got. And I know you haven't seen it yet, but again, I'm glad what we got what we got. I'll expand on that more a little bit later. But yeah, Rocky Four is still a lot of fun, even uh, the theatrical cut's still a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, like like you said, we'll we'll touch on it even a little more in depth when you talk about the director's cut, mm -hmm. wherever you have it. But what yeah. do you have at number seven? Number seven is Rocky Two for me. That is my number seven, um, so, so we're even. Hey, okay, we're even. So Rocky Two, um, and again, uh, not a bad movie. I I really five like star, Rocky Two. Five star for me. So at this point, yeah. for me, yeah. my list, everything else is a five star movie. So, gotcha, gotcha. Um, no, I mean Rocky Two. Um, you know, I love the fact that it it picks up right after the first one left off. Literally with them going to the hospital. <laughs> like I I dig all that stuff where uh, they have the, the, one a just a great great character moment where Rocky stumbles into Apostle's room and just, and just whispers to him, you know, did you give me your best? Yeah. And, and, and is Apollo lying when he says yes, maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know, you know, did, did he give him his best? Did he take the fight as seriously? I don't think he did. You know, I don't think he was in as good a shape as he needed to be. I love Apollo's quest throughout the whole movie, you know, starting with the, him getting the letters yeah. of, uh, you know, how much, how much did you get paid to, to carry that bum for, for 15 rounds, you know, you're a disgrace, you know, uh, you should have knocked that bum out, you know, uh, you know, and, and just three. seeing the intensity, <laughs> through, yeah, Creed in three, Creed in three, you know, and, and seeing the intensity of like, you can tell in his training, like in his brief training montages you get with him and Duke, like he's got this look in his eyes, like he's, yeah, he's ready to go to war. <laughs> yeah. He's got, he's got something to prove this time. Like he's ready to, he's ready to kill this dude and That's show the world that he's still the about. greatest. That, that it's, it's obviously it's literally said later, the eye of the tiger, but the concept of the eye of the tiger and having that. Oh, it started in two. That's yes. yeah. 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 And, 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 and honestly mm -hmm. in one, once, once Rocky, really committed to the fact that I, I just want to go the distance. That's, that's a similar concept where it's like he, he, he has mm. something to prove to himself to go the distance. Creed has to prove that, you know, he did, he didn't, you know, pretty much give away this, this match and then so on and so on. So that's one of those themes that I feel like is just so important mm -hmm. that, you know, once again, in Creed two, we'll eventually talk about that, that all the way into all these movies, the concept of that chip on the shoulder, the eye of the tiger or losing the eye of the tiger. It's a fantastic concept. And like you said, starts here and, or it really is yeah. talked about here. And oof, I love it. Yeah, no, that stuff's good. Um, and yeah, Rocky getting getting cocky with his money, and you know, doing the whole all the stuff with the with the commercials kind of going down the drain and all that stuff. But you know, there, there's still that conflict where it's kind of the first real conflict we get of of Adrian kind of being like, um, you know, how much are you willing to to lose by continuing to fight? You know, and and they kind of they harp the one of the reasons it's lower for me is they harp a lot on the on the eye stuff, you know, that you'll go blind and then they never really touch on that ever again in the series, which is, which is weird to me, you know, uh, like it's like, not like he's not getting punched in the eye the rest of the series and yet he's still seeing. Okay. So I, I thought that was a little uh, short sighted pun intended. Um, but you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is, this is like the least rewatchable, like what I, when I'm watching it, yeah. I'm not having a bad time, 
but the the second act is just so slow. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's, it's slow. Important. It's, yeah, it's, it's important it's and it, it has a lot to long. say. And it's it's a it's a lot mm. of character stuff that really expands on the franchise later on without without you know the stuff that we see in that second act you know a lot there mm. would be a lot less importance later on in the franchise but for this movie itself it's it's just it, it makes it a less rewatchable movie you know what I mean and and that's a bummer and that's why it's yeah. the lowest of my five stars where I think what it has to say mm. is amazing and I love it and when I'm watching it I'm having a good time and I'm happy I'm watching it but I'm not rushing out to watch it again. So it's, it's, Yeah, but you can't tell me you don't get jacked when, when she looks in his eyes in the hospital and she goes, you can do one thing for me. Win, and they kick on the music. Dun, 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 dun. And he gets this look in his eyes and Mickey, what are we waiting for? And you see him pounding the sledgehammer in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the junkyard and they get into it. And like, I think it's one of the better uh, training montages of the series. Uh, the actual fight, the super fight too, is really well done and well edited. Like, I think that's actually one of the better climactic fights of the series. Like the music is great. The, the drama is great. Again, I, I really dig the, just the setup of the fight that Apollo's trying to kill him as quick as he is, you know, and he, he's, he knock, he's knocking him down. He's knocking him around. Like he's going for it. And, you know, and, and he's just got to drag him out to that, that 15 again and get him where he can. But like, yeah, I think a lot of that stuff is, um, you know, it's a little, uh, you know, it's still very well directed, but yeah, I think that middle portion uh, and how kind of slow it is and, and, and kind of, it, it, it feels longer. It's the lone it feels first, longer. first of the series. So I feel like that's him getting, yeah. getting not, Getting used to it, personal, yeah, and getting a little too personal mm-hmm. character where he's a little too attached. Which in in three, you realize that he does a lot of like you know personal stuff, but it's so breezy. Whereas in this one, it's just not. So it's everything. Like I said, everything that you see is fantastic, and I love it. And I do, I honestly don't take anything out. It's just the pacing of it mm-hmm. is just a little. You know, what I mean, I feel like something. There's just something that you know. I wish it was tweaked a little bit. Like I said, it's still a five star movie for yeah. me personally, but it it is my number seven. So. Uh, yeah, Rocky me too. Rocky Two is my number seven, so I'm gonna go over to my number six, and I'm gonna go. Mm-hmm. This is actually a bummer for me because this actually just dropped on a rewatch. Like I said, all all these are five stars at this point, but mm-hmm. uh, it is Creed Two, and mm-hmm. the reason Creed Two dropped for me is because this is the first time that I rewatched it back to back, like consecutively with Creed One and Creed Two, and you can feel the difference mm-hmm. of the directing in this because it doesn't mm-hmm. have that magnetic you know, sensibility and direction and confidence that, uh, you know, Creed one had, and there's nothing wrong with the directing in it. It's just, it's similar to Rocky two where it's delivered. It's a little less rewatchable because you're really building up Adonis and his character and the stuff that he's going through because he's starting to get cocky with his, you know, Hollywood quote unquote, you know, mantra that he's built up. He's earned it at this point and he's got it. You know, that chip on his shoulder is not there. Like I said, the eye of the tiger goes missing. He doesn't have that. And it's one of those things where, the whole time he wants, and then he's because he's afraid, which is another you know um, reoccurring theme. The entire you know thing. Why you lose that attire? Because you're afraid, and he's afraid to not live up to the Creed name and to let it down and to mm-hmm. kind of you know. It's one of those where in Creed one he's talking about oh I want to make it on my own. You know I don't want to use the name's legacy. Mm-hmm. But also in Creed two it is it, it 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 establishes that it's not necessarily he doesn't he wants to make it on his own. He doesn't want to tarnish the Creed name and the Creed legacy. And it's one of those where mm-hmm. you know he's afraid. And if he had Mickey in his corner he would have had a bunch of bums you know stepping stones that he would you know run over yeah. like, like in you know Rocky three. But he didn't. So it's one of those where he didn't have that opportunity to rise up to the stardom and be the guy. So once you get the all the Drago stuff, which is amazing. It's just, I don't know. It's just one of those where it, it's the last act. It's, it might be my favorite fight. Like out of all of them, it might be my favorite fight. Cause this is one of those where it just makes you just, you know, it really, it does everything mm-hmm. like that you want from just a cinematic fight, but everything leading up, it's, it's, it's great. And I love it, but it just, it went down. I felt like, you know, um, Stephen Capel did, Junior, I think his last name. He did a pretty good. He did a really yeah. good job even directing the movie. But it just, I don't know. There's just something that you know on rewatch. So all the other ones, it they, you know, I have a personal attachment to, or they're more rewatchable. So Creed Two is my number six. Where is it for you? Okay, slightly higher. So we'll get to it in just a second if you catch my drift. <laughs> so uh, yeah, because um, my number. Well, it's my number five. Like, Creed 2 is my number five, but Creed 1 is my number six. If I want to jump into Creed, we can jump into Creed 1 for a second because that's on my that's my number six. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, if we, I guess we can go ahead and talk about it. See, that's another one that um, – see, the first Creed 
was one that I hadn't really gone back to other than maybe one time when it first came out on Blu-ray. I had not watched it since then, so it's probably been four or five years since I rewatched it, and I rewatched it yesterday, um, you know, because I really needed to get, like, a good ranking on it and get, get refreshed. Um, I will say it's one of Stallone's best performances of the franchise. Like, he's amazing in the movie. Like, he's he's got this, you know, he you can tell he's just kind of, He's still rocky. He's still uh, jovial when he needs to be. But like, man, I had forgotten about all this stuff where he's like, where when he gets the diagnosis and he's just like, I'm cool with dying. Like I've done everything I need to do. Like I'm alone right now. So I don't mind like just going out. Like Polly's gone. Adrian's gone. Mickey's gone. Apollo's gone. You know what I mean? Like, like I, it's just, it's just me. Like I'm just doing my thing you know, getting old. And, and I think that stuff is, is really great. Um, for me, like I had forgotten how kind of, um, and I understand it's part of his character, but I've forgotten how, how kind of cocky and brash that, uh, Adonis is in the first one. And it kind of put me off for a little while. Like if I found it hard to root for him for a long time for through the movie, nice. which to me kind of hurts it. <laughs> um, cause he's, you know, when he, when he jumps in, he does the, cause they do the, the kind of the scene from warrior where he jumps in to try to fight the, uh, the, the pros, <laughs> you know, like, you know, remember when Tom Hardy jumps in and, and, and knocks out the dude and he, and he, he gets the, the one guy and then the other dude just mops the floor with him. Yeah. <laughs> but then the other dude comes oh, in I see and you kills got your him. headset on this time. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Yeah. Right. He knows better. And, um, yeah, yeah. You're going to, you're going to learn, you're going to learn the hard way, boy, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like, and to me, um, I like Tessa Thompson as an actor. I don't really get into Adonis and Bianca's relationship very much. I, I, I don't connect to it just to me personally, which again, hurts the ranking of the movie for me is I'm, I, I just find that they're, the acting is good. Like everybody's doing their best. I just don't, I don't connect to the material. It just, something with it just doesn't click for me. And that really hurts it because Rocky and Adrian's relationship is the cornerstone of those earlier movies and it, it's key to um, key to both their characters. So when I can't connect to that, it hurts the movie overall just for me. Um, but it does have a lot of great moments. Um, and again, I, I like checking back in with Rocky and see where he is. And, you know, I, I do come around on Adonis, which is why Creed two is my number five and slightly higher on, on than Creed because uh, when I'm I'm with his plight throughout that movie and his, his storyline of getting humbled really and getting fearful and getting humbled in that movie and realizing that you know he is not you know like he's got he's still got a lot to prove and he's still got a lot to prove a lot to prove to himself and he's still got to find his heart in that movie um, and I think it's just kind of really. Uh, it comes to the forefront in Creed 2, and all the Drago stuff is awesome, <laughs> which I just love because I love Drago. <laughs> but yeah, so to me, that's why Creed 2 uh, at number five just slightly edges out Creed for me in my rankings. So uh, Creed 1 is my number four, so it's not, it's not, it's not much mm. higher, but it's one of those mm. when it's – there's something about – how they established uh, Donnie at the beginning of, you know, growing up in group homes because mm -hmm. he lost his dad through, and then his mom, and then, you know, being, you know, the infidelity. So it being a secret. So he didn't get Marianne until, you know, later on. But at that point he'd already, he's already, you know, a tough edge kid who's, you know, who's just mm -hmm. angry at the world. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that plays into his cocky stuff and that the concept of the chip on your shoulder where, you know, he, mm -hmm. you know, like Rocky says, he's like, I could tell, you know, you know, you talk good, you, you know, you're educated, you got brains, you know what I mean? But it's like, that's not who he is. That's just what he had to do. And, you know, kind of how he was raised by his yeah. mom trying to do the opposite of what Apollo was. But like, that's not who he is true to his core. And I feel like it does a good job of just developing, you know, him as a character in terms of, you know, the want and the, the, the desire to be somebody it doesn't even need to be a creed. It just he just wants to be a somebody. He wants to have an impact on the world. Yeah. So I feel like it, it does a really good job of him, you know, showing his dedication and the the Bianca stuff. So how how I feel about him and Bianca, it's one of those where it's one of those classic, you know, relationships that you see of just kind of two people who are just in the right place in the world and mm -hmm. at the same place where you know a creator meeting you know a creator essentially you know they're both entrepreneurs like mm -hmm. she's a singer and he's a boxer you know what i mean so they get the grind and the concept of you know working for yourself and to be somebody but you know 
he's got his his the his his downfall is the fact that he's he's afraid of his you know creed legacy which we find out later or you know you know uh, letting down the creed legacy and her downfall is the fact that you know she's losing her hearing you know what i mean she doesn't have much youth left like it's her life's getting cut in her, her youth per se her her uh you know her where she's at where she's going to be at is going to be cut in half because of the fact that you know her hearing is you know progressive you know the hearing loss so it's one of those where they can connect on that where they're like we don't really have much to lose of you know just you know we get each other you know what i mean some other people don't get us and it's one of those where it's, it's it's like the classic concept you know the fall in love overnight because you know you find that one person that just you know kind of fills your void and and i feel like that's why the chemistry between them is so important because you know they're not they're not they don't rush the concept of the relationship it just it just falls into place you know i mean they, they go on the date that's oh, not a date you know what I mean? he's not really trying to like woo her right. yeah it's, it's just like hey let's mm. first he's, he's mad at her because she's playing her music too loud you know what i mean it's one of those and then <laughs> yeah. and then when she yeah, finds yeah. out about the creed name she's like why didn't you tell me he's like i don't want to he's like it's not i don't care about none of that but you lied to me and it's one of those where it's like you know that's that they're developing a true relationship a bond of just two people mm. not at that point it's not it's not the singer boxer concept you know it's you know whatever so I, 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 you know, it's clearly not Rocky and Adrian. And like you said, Adonis is clearly not Rocky. But I think that I I feel like it was important to not be a carbon copy of Rocky and being the humble, nice guy. You know, he's he's Apollo Creed's son. He's not Rocky's son. You know what I mean? So he's got that. No, Apollo I, I, I totally get that. I just it, it took me a while to warm up to him, which is why Creed, I, even when the first time I saw it, um, not that it at the movie itself like left me cold but the, like i just didn't feel that spark of like any of the other rocky movies you know when i first saw those um and and but then when i saw creed and i saw it a little more uh developed and I'd, i was already familiar with that character and we can kind of jump in and keep going with this which is why i think you could go so many ways of creed 3 like when they eventually get to that like i'm, I'm really looking forward to that because i want to see kind of where it ends up because if they do this just as a trilogy or whatever i want to see kind of where these characters kind of end up and where they go, um, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, in the follow up. But yeah, like that's just that's the only reason Creed Creed Two. I think it's just I I understand that the first one is a little better um, directed because yeah, the the fight choreography, like all the one shot stuff, is is tremendous in Creed. Like that stuff is beautiful. You know, following up the stairs into the ring into the fight, the Tijuana one, like just doing the whole thing like in one shot is is amazing. Like all that stuff is is great. Um, but I feel a little more of the brutality in Creed Two. Uh, you know, yeah, when he's getting right, destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like that said, that, that feels way fights. more brutal. There, there, there's a there's mm -hmm. I was when I was watching it. I don't I don't know if I noticed before. Or if I just you know didn't remember that I noticed it, but in the Creed two mm -hmm. fight, you can tell that it's like green screen or whatever. But it works to its advantage because like the punches are so hard that mm -hmm. the, the camera has a has a an effect on it that utilizes mm -hmm. the green screen to its effect that it's like it feels you know what I mean like if you know if you're like in the MCU like Doctor Strange world where you know what I mean if it, it doesn't feel yeah. it feel because he just literally got the sense knocked out of him and I was like wow that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was on purpose or that's an accident but it works you know what I mean so it's one of those where as I'm in there you feel yeah. all the fighting and you feel the concept of mm -hmm. being broken down and building back up and you know it's it's a yeah. retread of what we've seen before but it works in this because finally Donnie got humbled, you know what I mean, and he hadn't been that yeah, yeah, yeah. because he'd been the cocky a hole, which makes you know, you know, it kind of worse why Creed two, you know, ends so strongly because of him being an a hole and being a prick up to that point, yeah. essentially, you know what I mean. But he he's a family man too at the same time, you know, calling Rocky Unk the entire time. He's like Unk, you call me Unk, okay. he's not our OG. What's that old ass gangster? <laughs> Unk's fine, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know like, and Rocky just doesn't skip yeah. a beat. He is Rocky, you know what I mean. He's still like he's Rocky, you know. Like, you know, you know, you know this. I finally watched the Rambo movies and it's like, you know, I've seen him do other stuff now at this point, but it's like when he's Rocky, he is Rocky. He's not Stallone, he is he's, Rocky. He's, he's, he's totally Rocky and yeah, he knows exactly how to slip right into that character again, you know, every time he little, plays little it, like you feel I, I don't yeah, I don't see Stallone. Like he's got a swagger about him when he puts on the hat, you know, and he's and he's just walking around. You're like, that's not Stallone. That's that's Rocky, man. Exactly. Like he knows he even just how to do those subtle, you know, those little shoulder kind of twitches, you know, and where those adjustments, you know, that he does and just kind of, um, you know, yeah, the way he kind of uh, delivers lines, like there's a way he delivers lines as Rocky as opposed to, st you know, Stallone doing other characters like Rambo or whatever. There's a way he delivers the lines that he knows how to slip into. And, and what's cool about those Creed movies is that, 
you know, he didn't write or direct them, but you know he still had input on that character yeah. because it's still his character. And, you know, they were like, you know he had to on set be like, well, I, I think did. Rocky would say it. Yeah. Well, how would, I think I would say it more like this. Rocky would say it more like that or maybe do this little movement while he's saying it, you know, like or kind of deliver it this way. And you had to know that those guys respected that because he, who knows the character better than the guy who wrote the original movie and, and wrote the character from scratch, you know? <laughs> Like definitely. So uh, yeah, so Creed two. Just a reminder, that's my number six, and Creed one's my number four, and then that's your six and five. Yeah, that's my six and five. So right. they're flip flop, but yeah, they're 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 kind of in the five and six slot. There you go. Mm-hmm. So my my number five is Rocky Balboa, and mm. this is we're not far off too because Rocky Balboa is my number four. My next my next one. So we're not far so, off either on that one. Yeah. So Rocky Balboa is a movie that I am so glad i rewatched for this because after the first time i watched it i don't know what i was thinking to be honest it's it's actually ironic this week of watching just other movies i've watched a bunch of given a bunch of second chances last two weeks and i've pretty much been wrong on all of them (laughs) and this is one of them where i was like (laughs) i think i think i watched all these movies that i rewatched last two weeks at the same time because i just disliked them for stupid reasons i don't remember and i was like i don't you know i don't really understand why like I remember my memory of it. I'm like, oh, Mason Lyon Dixon, you know, he's he's out of shape. And he doesn't really look good. But A, that's kind of the point because, he, you know, he wasn't taking Rocky serious and he's being a jerk. But also mm-hmm. the actual boxing that that actor does a really good job of, like, doing kind of like a Floyd Mayweather impersonation. You know what I mean? It's mid-2000s. That's kind of like the hype of, you know, that type of guy where it's like, you know, he can't be mm-hmm. beat. You know what I mean? And he's like the quick, you know what I mean? He's like the flashy you know that the only thing that is dated about this movie is the way he dresses it because it's so two thousands. But... Yeah. Oh, it's like that. It's all those like bright whites and like white ball caps and like yeah and like the and baggy like the blues pants. and the whites and the baggy stuff. Yeah. But no, no, that was one of the, again one of the pleasant surprises when I went back to the movie as well because I, I did the same thing a few days ago. I rewatched Rocky Balboa and I'm glad I did because um, I think it ranked higher than what I would have ranked it beforehand um, it had my, I not it rewatched it. Bottom. It was easily my bottom. Oh so. wow. Yeah. No. It, it's it's really good and I had forgotten that they open with Mason Dixon. Like they open with him in that fight, like winning the fight, but then the crowd is like booing him and throwing ice at him. And there's like this thing of like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Like they're, they're we're, we're kind of into the modern era of boxing. Like it, it feels different. It feels more modern. Um, and it's like, okay, we're going to throw Rocky into this this world that he's completely unfamiliar with, you know, of all these uh, high end promoters and millions and millions of dollars and the flash and the presentation and, and, you know, pay-per-view and all this stuff, you know, and, and he's not familiar with that, but, but I, I really liked a lot of the, and I can go ahead and talk about Balboa too, because it's my next one. So we're kind of just talking about Balboa right now. Anyways, we're kind of lining up, but, uh, but yeah, like I, I even yeah, I liked his stuff even uh, with his Mickey, uh, the Marvin character. You know, the older trainer that he goes back to is kind of his his Mickey. You know, that he you can tell he started with. Um, you know, talking about how you got to get that that pride back. You know, like you got to get that eye of the tiger back yeah. too. You know, the same thing. Like and and his is more not necessarily about the eye of the tiger all the way, but he's never had that, he's that never had challenge. Reason. Like yeah, that. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's never had a reason to have it yeah. and to dig down and find his own will and his own heart to like really, again, drag yourself up, uh, you know, seven rounds in, eight rounds in, nine rounds in to get up and keep and find that motivation to keep fighting. He's never had that drag oh, out yeah. brawl where you got to find it. Yeah. And like, I really like that plight of Mason Dixon. Like, I think it's a strong part of the movie. You know, the fact that they focus so much on that and don't just make him this, you know, really generic, yeah, you know, modern boxer. He's, he's just a different era. Yeah, no, he's not. Era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a new era and he's he's got the money and he's got the entourage, you know, and he's got the big the big house, you know. But, like, he's got this – the even his performance, like, he's got this look in his eyes where he's just like there's something missing. Like, because he's, he's not connecting, you know, he, he wants – more he wants the respect but he doesn't know how to get it you know he just doesn't and and the way they kind of work uh rocky into that is is just it's just fun like i I really liked you know all of that yeah i I loved how they 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 brought the concept of the simulator in there and how they they you know they're like oh Mm -hmm. back in the day you know um ali and uh rocky marciano they did a a, uh simulation Mm -hmm. and you know in theory and it's it it ties into what you're saying how you know mason had never had a real challenger so you know, of course they're going to bring up the concept like, oh, well, who, who's the most recent heavyweight box we can think of? Rocky Balboa, a long time ago. 
what if these two went up together and he crushes them and it's yeah, like yeah. Oh, exactly because and then it just gives him that reason to fight you know what i mean and it's it's one of those where you know i want to do this and rocky like i said in in rocky 5 where you know he was retired he didn't really get to end out you know he, he just he retired because of how things went down so what you get in rocky balboa it's his redemption it's it's how he gets to redeem himself and paulie he even gets a moment where he's like he's like this is all i know man you know i'm 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 you mm-hmm. know I'm, I'm becoming this you know what i mean this when you said when you do so yeah. long enough like you're that i'm that you know he's been at the meat plant you know yeah. the factory for so long that's like that's just all he is and it's like rocky sees that he's like mm-hmm. i don't want that and he goes back you know to adrian's um to grave on her birthday and then you know paulie's like i don't want to do this no more and he's like why he's like because all, all i all you have are good memories all i have is bad memories because i treated her so bad and it's just it kind of gives yeah you know, paulie finally a little bit of closure of realizing that he was a bum and he was a jerk and he you know obviously too late you know too little too late but at least it gives him a chance you know you know to like redeem himself a little bit, at least by acknowledging, you know, his way. Well, yeah, he at least has some, the first time he's had any kind of self-reflection, which he's never had in the he's series. Probably you sober. Know. It's probably the first time he's yeah, sober. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he's always blamed everything on everyone else. You know, we talk about the the opening of Rocky Three, where he's just like, you never gave me anything. You never did this for me. And he's just like, never well, dude, oh, you, we give things to friends or you never ask. You don't humbly, you know, you just you just want to take, take, take. You don't have any kind of, yeah, there, he finally has a moment of self-reflection of like, well, yeah, damn, like I did treat her like shit, like when I probably shouldn't have, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I can't go back and apologize now. It's, it's too late to do that. So maybe at least if I can make it right with you, Rocky, then maybe like that'll give me at least some some kind of closure, you know what I mean? Like or try to movie be a better person. Making this, you know what I mean? Like, and mm. that's, that's why yeah. That's why it's, it's, it's probably like, you know, I, I wasn't a Rocky fan at the time when this came out, so I, I don't know like the buzz of when it came out. But it's like I can't imagine that people are like, seriously, really? You're gonna make another Rocky movie this late? He's old, but like in the context it's, of the movie, it makes a lot it, of sense. Yeah, it it was kind of like that because I I remember when I saw it, it came out um, Christmas in uh, 2006, and like I was excited for it because that was around kind of the height of my Rocky fandom. I mean, I was like 20 years old watching them on cable every time they came around. I had the DVDs, you know, and uh, and like I was excited for it. But there were those articles of just like. Oh really? Like Stallone at sixty or whatever is like gonna do another fight and like gonna do another Rocky? But like the way they work that they work that into the plot though, it's not like they just ignore it. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's the whole press conference where they're calling him a Balborosaurus and you know they're calling him extinct. You know I mean they're you know they're, I mean right. but I mean like it's not like they ignore that. You know like they and he's uh, he's of course not gonna be able to keep up with somebody, a modern fighter like Mason Dixon, like a Floyd Mayweather, you know, sort of thing. Like, they're just like, you can't spar. You can't, you don't have speed. Like, you can't do all this stuff. Like, you just got to get strong and hope you can land some really good shots, <laughs> you know, essentially, and just be in as, as much of a physical chin. Yeah, so. But one of the themes I like in this movie, um, and it comes kind of through the Marie character, is the theme of that fighter's fight. And it's like, if you got this thing in you, it's never going to go away. And like, if you got to get it out and every now and then you just got to do it. And that's who Rocky is. He's a fighter. It's like, um, you know, Apollo was a fighter. Like he, he just couldn't escape that. He just, that is what he is. And, and the fact that she's, supportive of that she's just like well hey if that's what you got to do man fighters fight and it was kind of ironic when i was re-watching this rocky four thing before we go live there's a line about that where even rocky goes adrian i'm a fighter it's what i do yep. you know and you're just like oh man what a great time to kind of like go inside that like it all just flows together like when you watch them you're just like oh man like it's such a it's such a great theme and yeah like i i like that it's and then, and that kinda, she embraces it and she supports it and you it know kind of parallels you know the disconnect between him and robert because robert just doesn't understand that you know what i mean because mm-hmm. robert his whole life he's you know he's had he hasn't had a struggle you know what i mean his only struggle mm-hmm. in life is living in the shadow of rocky balboa his father and he's been bitter about it since he was a teenager you know what i mean so it's like that's just something he couldn't couldn't get over and uh, they touched on that. I think it was in the first Creed when he's like, you never train your son. He's like, I tried, but, you know, he just didn't get into it. And it's just like, you know, if yeah. you're not a fighter, that's just not who you are. You know what I mean? And like, mm-hmm. you don't you don't have that drive, that ambition. And it and Robert, I don't want it's it's tough to pick on Robert because you don't want to say he's like selfish. But like he is because, you know, everybody, no one's really like he's like, I only got this job because of your name. It's like. I, if you work hard, you know you can use you can use your resources to get to a 
a place, but you got to accept the fact that you still yeah. develop yourself. And he just never developed his own personality and his no, his own persona. And like you know, it's it's tough for tough for Robert because it's that's I don't think that's a flaw in the franchise. I think that is just a fleshed out like concept of a character where it's just like he just do- isn't there. You know what I mean? He just doesn't want want it. And it's yeah. like, I it's one of those where and if you ask you know you do if you do a top ten you know Rocky moments the speech between the monologue of Balboa Stallone in the alley or, you know, with, with Robert, like that's, you know, top three. Oh just, yeah. It's how hard hit get hit and keep moving forward. Yeah. Like, no, it's yeah. a great, like, it's, it's a great it's moment. One of those where it's like that, that, that it's is awesome. Rocky Balboa. You know what I mean? Like that, that's what mm-hmm. he's been living through his entire life. And his son, like I said, cause his son hasn't had to struggle. He just doesn't understand that concept. But once he hears that, you can tell him his, his face and uh, Mila Ventimiglia did a really good job of like, doing that where he stayed quiet the entire time he listened probably for the once in his life as you know as robert balboa like actually listening yeah, to yeah, yeah. And honestly, that's probably the one time rocky was did a true father moment unfortunately to say because you know like i said he's not a bad father he just doesn't know how to do it but and the way he does it is through an inspirational speech essentially about fighting you know what i mean and so that's mm-hmm. the time where robert finally it clicks so he's like this isn't who I am, but this is who you are, and I can accept that. And he's in his corner in the end, you know what I mean? And he's he's the first time that he's truly yeah. in his corner, and it's 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 a very special moment. And it's like I said, so that's this movie shot up my rankings. Like it went from literally easily eight as a three star movie because obviously this scene mm-hmm. and just Rocky Balboa, I can't give it a negative rating, but it went from a three star at number eight to number five out of eight, and if it's a five star movie, you know what I mean? Like I I was so yeah 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 how, how much this jumped up for me. So, okay. like I said, Rocky Balboa is my number five. We already talked about my four and my three, actually, already, which my four was Creed and my three was Rocky Five. So what is your highest that we haven't talked about yet? Okay, so my number three that we haven't talked about yet, oddly enough, is Rocky Three. <laughs> Apropos, uh, my number three is Rocky Three. And, uh, yeah, and that was another one that I was – I was rewatching, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I, I, I think Rocky Three is just uh-huh. – it has a little bit of everything and it's just a little bit of, of everything that you kind of love about the Rocky series again, kind of smashed into one, but it's got the really entertaining over the top stuff. It's got really good, again, more really good themes of, of redemption. And, and of course, obviously the, the theme of the franchise, the eye of the tiger, but it's, it's explicitly stated here. Um, I think it's got the best Apollo we've ever had, honestly, in three, like this stuff where he's, He's training Rocky is so it's such a fun dynamic of him just being the trainer and and pulling, you know, because he's it's the first time he's really kind of tried to understand who Rocky is and really wants to connect with them and be like, you know, I want to I want to bring something out of you that I know you have in you still. And like, we got to go find it, you know, and we got to we got to get that again. And and I just I to me, I think Mr. T for all the jokes we make about Mr. T gives a phenomenally charismatic performance in this movie. Like I think he is incredible. I think he's incredible in this movie. Like every line he says sizzles and sparks and like he has so much charisma in this movie. Like and he and again he's a villain in quotation marks. But like you see where he's coming from too. Like he's another guy that's kind of like Rocky. He's, he's been like a street fighter. He's been a local guy. You know, he's been fighting his way legitimately through the rankings and destroying people. And when he's finally got to the top, he feels like this dude who he's been aim- gunning for. You know, like it doesn't want to give him a shot just because you know his manager is like blocking him. And it's like, no, like I want my chance. Of the I've worked hard as hard as you have or anybody else. Like I want my shot. And the only reason he has to be I think who he is is to get that shot and kind of go after Adrian and go after, you know, make the comments that he does, you know, at the, at the statue things and all that kind of stuff. But he has to do what he has to do to get his shot. And, but like, man, his, he's so great. Just, he's so quotable. Just everything he does. He's got this look in his eyes. That's just, that's just awesome. You know, this is intensity. Um, I just think he's, he's tremendous in the movie. I think he's criminally underrated as like one of the, one of the great Rocky characters. So, so the the concept of Mr. T, a Mr. T, just as a celebrity, was has, was mean mm-hmm. throughout the the eighties and nineties and two thousands. Yeah, and, and then the line "the I pity the fool" that just became a running meme for years. That mm-hmm. people don't realize that in the context of the film, when he says it, it's like 
it, it's no, I don't hate the man, but I pity the fool. Exactly, yeah, because it's it's just he, it's one of those where he he is technically a nobody. Other, than, I mean, he's the number one contender, but like he's really a nobody in terms of like you know globally. But like for him to pity the champ, you know what I mean? That that's he's trying to say something. He's just like you know he's like when it comes down to it, I am better. I am you know I am I you know what are you gonna bring pain or what is your prediction for this match? Pain, you know what I mean? Like he that's, yeah he's and like you know it's touched on in a uh, Creed two when uh when uh the one the promoter comes over and he's like sorry for the antics but like even your father knew that you know you got you got to be memorable because look at all those champs on the wall 77 champs and what they remember what four or five of them and that that's what mr that that that's what that's what he's going for in in this movie where he's like i want to be remembered and i want i want to you know force my way in there because my talent speaks for itself but nobody's watching you know what i mean and like Mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite montages how how you're 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 paralleling Rocky's fights with Mr. T's fights and how they're, they're both, you know, he's Rocky is solidifying quote unquote, because of, you know, bums or whatever. He's solidifying yeah, yeah, right. yep, status and Mr. T, he is rising up all the way. Up oh yeah. The number one contender. And it's like, mm-hmm. you know, in a, in true fashion. And then there's plenty of scenes where, you know, he, he's, he's in the crowd of Rocky's fights. And then you see Mickey, you know, watching watching he, him he, he's not yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. just like oh yeah we're avoiding this guy he's no <laughs> we are avoiding no he's got a look in his eyes where he's like scared yeah he's this dude rocky. will kill at this point this dude will kill rocky so like and that's what he believe. says like he's gonna kill you he's gonna kill you and, and like I, and that's, he, that's why he doesn't want him to fight him and i feel like yeah that's, that's extremely important because that's not mickey the manager that is mickey the guy who loves the rocky. person yes yes and that, and that really that's such a you know a low-key concept in this film that just like really strengthens and tightens the relationship between the two and just you know Mm -hmm. the love that these two men have for each other because you know obviously you know you think about the era that they're both from you know you know it's you know it's tough to love another man in that in that in that aspect of like family non-family members but like they have that true you know whether you call it a father figure relationship Mm -hmm. mental relationship however you want to look at it but like when you really think about you don't want to show your sensitive side but like deep down, right. they have that, and then that's why Mickey leaves because he's like, I can't watch this. You know what I mean? You're gonna do this without me, and they, yeah. they kind of mirror that later in, you know, Creed two. And it just, it's just, it's just so beautiful, and like the action, and then. And I, I like the raw emotion of of when Mickey dies. Like the way that Rocky like cries over him is so real to the way I've seen people cry yep. over things like that. Like it's not that Hollywood crying of just like, oh no, please, Mick, please don't go. No, you know, no. it's oh. it. No, no, no. It's that like I can't muster any words of just like there's just guttural noises like oh but the, no 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 make it you know where you can't even put words together you're just like overcome with emotion and you can't say anything you got no breath you're out of breath and just like it, it's just overwhelming like i think like and again people have memed that over the years but like if you watch in the context of the movie it's very real like and there's some, and the Rocky fact that is the is the solidification yeah. of out of context it's cheesy, it's over the top, it's goofy, it's silly. But in context, mm-hmm. it makes so much sense of what they're doing, why they're doing, and how they're doing. Like it just fits. And mm-hmm. and uh so my my favorite and I and I kinda teased this earlier, my, my favorite like scene is on the beach. And mm-hmm. it's the first time we get Rocky to admit that he's afraid. And like yeah. he's he's genuinely afraid. Like that's why he loses the eye attire, because he's afraid, cause in Rocky one and two, you know, he's, he's on the come up, he's on the rise, he's a nobody, but now he's got mm-hmm. all the stardom. And once he realizes that all these fights he's had were, you know, not setups, but, you know, kind of pushovers, they were bums, they were stepping stones. Mm-hmm. Like now all the confidence that he's built up over the last couple of years just went down the drain because he's like, I don't know if any mm-hmm. of that was legit. And I'm afraid now that I'm not going to live up to the the legacy that I built up for myself. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. and I, I it's I don't know, it just hits hard. And then everything with Apollo, where he's like, "What is wrong with you, man?" Like that, like you said, it's it's some great acting from Carl Weathers here because he, yeah, he is this character. You know what I mean? He's just he's like at this point, Rocky is his friend. Like you, you totally believe he he's his friend. Initially, he did it because he's like, "I can't do this." But I'm gonna essentially how Mickey uses Rocky and Rocky One, 
initially Apollo was using Rocky in Rocky three of like, Oh yeah. Let's do this. Well, I, I got an opportunity here. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to, you know, I, I'm not going to pass up a good but opportunity to get to know each other. And everything, but yeah. It's legit. And then, yeah, and then yeah. and, but it's, it's, it doesn't shy away from who the characters are. Like when, uh, when they go to, to the, to their, their his own club where he, he grew up and Paulie's like, I don't like all this music. You better watch it, buddy. You know what I mean? But Paulie's still being the a-hole that he is. It's, I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> that has one of my favorite, one of my favorite subtle Rocky lines where he, he, he aside stuff to Paulie after they're about to fist fisticuffs and he just goes you know Paul it just takes about six years to get to know him <laughs> he's just like man I don't have six years <laughs> like I thought it's just a really underrated line it's just a really funny line I kind of laughed out loud when I saw it I forgot about that line <laughs> it takes about six years to get to know him <laughs> like, which, which is so true so and rocky. honestly it's one, he's one of those characters where like you, he might be annoying until you become a fan of the franchise because as you're watching it you realize yeah. his, his, his arc so the last thing I want to touch mm-hmm. on Rocky 3 um Similar on the beach scene is you know the him and Adrian scene and like I can yeah. watch that scene and the one from Rocky Five and just oh my god like this is why I love these two because they are just he's like I she's like mm-hmm. I care about you you know I, what do you what what do you want and she gets him to open up to the I am afraid you know what I mean if, and no one else is gonna do mm-hmm. that even Apollo couldn't do that Mickey couldn't do that Paulie could no one could get that well out and she's him. like. It's okay to be afraid. You have to embrace fear before you can overcome fear. And that's the thing that Rocky was afraid to admit. Like, you have to embrace it before you can face it and overcome it. Like, and that's just a good thing about life. You got to face the fear head on before you can overcome fear. You know, like, you can't just cower in a corner. You got to face it head on and you got to. You gotta dig down deep and get that eye of the tiger and overcome that fear, man. Like that's no, all that stuff is great. Like and yeah, it's such a meme to death movie. And yeah, people when they think about it, they think about Mr. T and they think about Hulk Hogan. I'm a wrestling fan, so I love the Hulk Hogan stuff. Thunder but, Lips. But, like, oh my god, Thunder Lips is great. He's so great. <laughs> but like, but that scene's so much fun. Um, and it comes back into terms when he fights. Uh, uh, Tommy in the street, he's doing leg sweeps, he's doing double leg takedowns, so he learned something from Thunderlips, <laughs> so it comes back around <laughs> in the end. But, but, <laughs> but anyways, but like, it gives it gives I Rocky a lot of the moments where he's like, that is a big guy. And he's like, why are you so mad? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He just say you the little things are yeah. that just that's that character where it's like you have moments like that, just little one liners that aren't oh, even yeah. whips. It's just Rockyisms that it's it's I, I, I love this yeah, movie yeah. much and uh Bob Hope would <laughs> it's my number two. So that's 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 my number two, it's uh, your number three. See. So there, there's a lot of patch by this. Nice. It's the only one that, obviously, if you've been paying attention to my list, it's the only one that would overcome my number one. It maybe in the future, but it just hasn't yet. So uh, Rocky, Rocky Five was my number three, and Rocky Three is my number two. So what is your number two? My number two is the original Rocky. Oh my! God. Uh, is my number two? Yeah. Okay. So I need to watch the director's cut. Apparently, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, because my yeah, I, you'll figure out what the number one is. Because <laughs> yeah, the number one is number one. Now, um, again, Rocky is my number two only because when I think about the Rocky franchise, oddly enough, the first one and a lot of the moments in the first one are the not the first things that come to mind. And I think that's the same with a lot of people. You know what I mean? Because it's not necessarily like a boxing movie. It's a character study. It's a character movie, and it's a movie just about this 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 struggling guy and again it's number it's it's just number two only because it really only for for that is because it's like i'm trying to think of, of of what it's like i mean when you think about i'm trying to think of a good example like um i don't know like friday the 13th or something like you don't think about a lot of things people think about when they think about Freddy Krueger or Friday the 13th is like stuff from the sequels and like all over the place. You know what I mean? They don't necessarily think about like the original one or something. You know, that, that's really the only reason. Um, not Again, not to say it's it's a phenomenal film, obviously. Um, it's 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 great. Like it's it's my number two. It's right up there. And I was re-watching um, – I didn't get a chance to rewatch the whole thing, but I was re-watching a, a good chunk of it. Um, but yeah, like Stallone is – it just mirrored his real life, like the desperation of just like, this is his last shot, you know, to do anything. And like, he's not even that old, but like, this is his shot. And if it fell through, I mean, just imagine if this movie flopped, we wouldn't know who Sylvester Stallone was. It would have been this random anomaly movie if it had failed or or if it had even – it almost didn't even get finished because it ran out of money. So, I mean, imagine if it had just been this choppy mess of a movie that wouldn't have got done. Like, we wouldn't know who Sylvester Stallone is to this day. And the fact that he put everything on the line for this movie, much like, you know, it, it, it just – you could tell he, he wrote – 
this character out of his real life situation and you just feel that and that's why you get so wrapped up in his story is you know the the iconic scene where mickey comes to his apartment and wants to be his manager and you can tell rocky's just kind of like he's going along with it for a minute but he's not really saying anything you know he's kind of just yeah okay mick yeah da, da, da. and then and then it just it just builds and builds and builds and finally like we've all had moments like that where it's just like it's just building and you just have to get it out and he's just like Oh, we ready to leave my place now? Why? Because it stinks. Thanks. Yeah, it stinks. It stinks. Yeah, all my whole situation stinks. You want to talk about your prime? What about my prime? You know, I could have used you about ten years ago, Mick. What about mine? What about my shot? What about my thing? My, uh, you know, like, and he just goes off, and like, we've all had moments like that in life where you just yep. go off, and you're just like, you know, like, uh, you know, what about my time? What, what about the my chance? And you know, like all that stuff is, it's just so well written. It's just such a simple movie. Like, again, when I think of Rocky, I think of big fights, big character moments and stuff like that. And that's the only reason it's not, it's not my number one as a, it's, again, it's still my number two out of the series. Like I, I love this movie to pieces. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, it's just not the thing I think of when I think of Rocky first, when it comes to my head and I have to be true to myself when I think about Rocky, you know, in that context. Yeah. So, uh, a when my when I release my my top one hundred, you'll realize that just the themes and like the types of movies I like are, are less action based and more character based mm-hmm. or emotion based. So obviously that you know talks about even even though Rocky Rocky Three is a full fledged action movie, it has such emotion, and that's why I connect to Rocky Five. You know where most people don't. Rocky One is like you said a simplistic story of you know the underdog and just the the, mm-hmm. you know, the, oppor- the land of opportunity and how 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 it comes into the point of you know Apollo needs a guy and it builds up his character he's like the Italian stallion he's like that guy's a bum the guy. Italian stallion yeah, like, and then even Duke is just like yeah but but he's a southpaw I don't want you messing around with southpaws you know like, here's just that simple thing of like eh. it's it's the name it's yeah like, that's what I want I want the name yeah it just, it just and he's local up. he's a local Philly the Italian oh, stallion oh just it just it just works yeah yeah and the fact that Rocky says no yeah. Rocky says no to the opportunity initially like they say do you want to fight the champion no No. he was gonna spar with them because he he wanted the opportunity to learn he wanted to be be there but Mm -hmm. like the confidence he has no confidence and Mm -hmm. you know and also Mm -hmm. that's why him and him and him and uh adrian they work so well together because they lack confidence in different ways every everything that rocky has in terms of his his personality is a facade it's him trying to be cool you know, deep down, he's awkward and goofy and, you know, stumbles over his words. He's uneducated. He's over at practicing his lines like, oh, those birds was like candy. You know what I mean? You know, he's like, oh, you, you see those guys cuffing links? She's like, I know. I sold them to you. It's like he's just – all he does is he's like, I'll come back and tell you a new joke. You know what I mean? Like every day. And it's like it's he doesn't really have, you know, anything to like set himself out except for being a brawler. And that's why he works for Gazo. You know, you know, he's, he's a punch – you know, he's mm-hmm. over there. He's a collector. And it's and that's why he's able to put up with Paulie because Paulie Paulie's so crazy and over the top. But he's like, I, you know, I who you know who else am I gonna hang out with? You know what I mean? This this guy, you know what I mean? It's just one of those things that just starts him from the bottom. Mm-hmm. And he's a grown man. It's not like as a kid where it's like you know, obviously you know later we see Adonis. You know he's a little older, like he's in his twenties, but he's clearly in his twenties. Where you know at this point Rocky's like what twenty eight or you know I think I don't remember exactly. He's age. close to thirty in this yeah, movie, pretty, I think, because he's, yeah, because he's talking about how I needed you ten years ago when I was like twenty when I was starting. Yeah. To, when I was just so, starting to box, you know what I mean? I was starting to really out get of fights. His prime at this point, pretty much. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Obviously, he's in his prime, but also he's on the way out. So it's one of those. He's on his way like, out. Yeah, his, yeah. He's his, seeing the light. The light is the tunnel is coming in, and, and it's, it's closing. And he knows that. Origin story. You know what I mean? Like obviously, with this mm-hmm. wasn't technically written as an origin story, but at the end of the day, it's it is. It's an origin story of a character, mm-hmm. and for him to be as already that old, you know what I mean, and already one foot out the door, you know what I mean, especially with the no training and he's a bruiser, so you're going to lose life off, you know, you lose years off your life just inherently because of just your the, the, the path you've taken of all these, you know, brawler fights and just the, just the scene from the beginning when, you know, he's through the fight and he's like, in the the guy, he's like, oh yeah, you know, here, here's, here's, 63 dollars um minus 15 for locker and rent and 
and uh, fees. Here's your thirty two dollars. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all that for thirty two. Uh, yeah, yeah. When do I fight again? He's like, I'll let you. You know what I mean? It's just like, damn. He's for my, sure. I got my head, my head caved in, and my nose broke for for thirty two dollars. You know what I mean? For that, that's it. And, and, yeah, and, that, and that's who he is. And then, and then, and then, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, he's he's like I said, that's why it's a facade. He's always trying to be cheerful because you know he he's you know he's a good person deep down, but the fact that he's so animated about it it's because he's trying to you know reflect that on other people because that's who he is you know he's he's not necessarily doing it for for any reason other than the fact that you know i let me just try and make the world a better place and that's this was so love he's like when when the, you know when he's going past the guys and they're singing and stuff he's like you guys are real good like little things like that just the comments where he's just always yeah. trying to spread positivity that's why i love this character so much and you know everything with him the, the scene with him and adrian where like that, that's the one thing that people like to say it's like creepy but a it's the 70s so it is what it is. And then B, it's just the fact that she's a grown woman who's never been in an apartment with a man before. So it's not even like – it's just her being uncomfortable. She obviously likes him. She's on the date and everything. And he doesn't technically force himself on her. You know what I mean? So it's like it's just giving her the opportunity to open up. You know what I mean? And that and that's what I love about mm-hmm. it. He, it takes – like I said later on, it takes them two to yeah. be that, that void of like without each other. You know what I mean? They, they, they wouldn't be who they become. You know what I mean? They are they they set they set the match for each other to like become the fire that you eventually see these characters and you know you know mm-hmm. you know people want to judge that whatever I don't care it's I their their relationship is beautiful and I I love this movie so much and clearly it's my number one and it is your number two so uh, my number two <laughs> let's talk about this director's cut bud because <laughs> because my number one and and listen it wouldn't have been had I not rewatched it three times since I saw it in the theater. Uh, about a month ago, <laughs> and I've I put it on several times. Okay. Um, God Tell damn me. it! I love this director's cut of Rocky IV. It, it it just to me to go from a movie that was essentially an extended music video and heavy on montages and had this "Let's Go America, Us versus Them, Rocky Saves the World" to just through some alternate footage, um, some alternate lines, some extra you know things here and there, um, giving the movie a chance to breathe, it not only changes the tone of the film, it completely changes the themes of the film, it completely changes the character moments of the film, uh, it puts new context into other um, situations and other lines from previous films. And the fact that he was able to do all that just by, and again, not reshooting anything new, you know, or, or you know, because obviously he wouldn't have the chance to do that, um, but just finding all this stuff and just making these changes, how drastically he was able to change that, I'm rewarding that with my number one because, God damn it, it's good. And, like, it, it just, it, it's such a different film. Again, people, some people have brushed it off because they don't know Rocky IV, kind of like we may know Rocky IV, you yeah. know, and Rocky III and things like that, who have only seen it once or twice, and they're like, well, that wasn't really that much different. No, it is. If you know this movie front to back like we do, and you can go and watch this movie, and you know what they cut out, what they left in, what is new footage, what's not, um, you know, the order of the some of the stuff. Um, I just paid for getting it. Into, I obviously, I haven't watched it, but it, there's, a, there's a feature that says then and now, and I'm definitely curious yes. about what, what yes. to do with that. Yes. Well, and there, there's a whole, yeah, making of. He did like an hour and a half thing about how, how he's been doing this for like two years. Like literally the studio just had to be like, all right, we got to put this out at some point. Like, otherwise you're going to take it with it forever. <laughs> and that's what he kind of did. Um, you feel more of the brutality of the fights in this movie. You feel Apollo's death way more. You get his motivations for why he has to do this. Not just why he wants to do this, why he has to do this. And why even he even feels like if he dies – that's exactly why the way I want to go out, you know, like I got to go out being me, um, you know, and, and Rocky, his motivation again in the original theatrical cut is like, well, I got to stand up for America essentially, you know, or yeah, yeah, it's about Apollo, but like, you know, I, I you know, they don't have the damn, the speech at the end. He, he does, he's not, it's not about that. It's about just him uh, being a fighter and doing what he has to do to, to, be a fighter and be that warrior that Apollo was and like do what he has to do. Cause he is a fighter as well and make his own fate. And it's just, 
fuck, it's just good. It's just really, <laughs> really good. <laughs> like, I can't even say because it it's hard to describe it if you, you haven't seen it, it too. I mean, you've you seen it by it, now. We'll be talking about it in depth. I just bought yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. Soon. Yeah. Yeah, I because I, I came home and bought it the next day after the theater, and I and I rewatched it because I wanted to make sure I was like, man, did I really enjoy it as much as I I think I did? And I was like, yeah, damn it, just like the movie just just feels more relaxed. It just feels like, um, you know, it there's there's just there's, there's just subtle moments again. If you know these movies and how much more they linger on Drago, like just taking absorbing America himself, you know, getting his first taste of over the top, you know, uh, the indulgence of America essentially in this in this Vegas thing, you know, and seeing all this stuff for essentially the first time, you know, you can, you can imagine what that would be like, and that he just wants to be this. He just wants to be this super athlete, you know, that he just wants to be a, a fighter himself. You know, it's fighter versus fighter. He just wants to prove what he is on his own as well, which is why, um, you know, when he has that outburst near the end of the end of the fight, he's like, I fight for me. I don't fight for you. Like I fight for me, <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's what he does. Um, it just, it puts everything in that movie in the, in the context. And I, I just wholeheartedly applaud Sylvester Stallone for one to go back and just do something different with that movie because he knew there was something better in there. He just knew there was something better in there. And there was a personal project that he wanted to do. And you can tell he has a passion in about that material. And he felt like something was lost in the process, in the studio process, you know, back in the day. And he's just like, I just want to do this just to, again, it's like why he wanted to make Rocky Balboa in the first place. He's like, I just want to like, regardless, I know you love Rocky Five, but that's it. But him, him personally, he wanted to make, he felt like I couldn't go out on that. Like I gotta, I gotta redeem. Like I need to go out on a high note on this character. Like for me personally, and I gotta, I gotta do this thing right. And I gotta do it justice. And the fact that he wanted, he's like, I mean, I know people. He and he even said, I know people love Rocky Four, like for for what it is. But he's like, I just want to do this for me, for the character, for the other characters to give them justice. And he doesn't want to take away the other cut. Like, it's always going to exist. He's just like, I just wanted to have this available for the hardcore Rocky fans that love these characters that want to see them done right. You know, well, how it's like, they want to see. Rocky for Rocky versus Drago, Drago, the ultimate director's cut. <laughs> That's just such yeah. a. <laughs> No, it's so it's such a weird, complicated name. It's just like you could just call it the Rocky Four Directors Cut, but like, yeah, no, it's Rocky versus Drug. Okay, fine, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I obviously haven't seen it, so it's, I can't I can't touch on it specifically. But you you sold me, so I mean, obviously mm-hmm. I I bought it, so I'm I'm gonna watch it, and you know we'll we'll see we'll see my thoughts on it, and there's a chance that mm-hmm. I'll do a review on it because I'm gonna I might want to talk about it, so we'll we'll, we'll see. You know mm-hmm. how, how that goes, but as of right now, all I have is the original, and that is my number eight. And my number seven, <laughs> just to reiterate, Rocky two. My number six, mm-hmm. Creed two. My number five, Rocky Balboa. My number four, Creed. My number three, Rocky five. Perfect movie. <laughs> my number two, Rocky three, and my number one Rocky franchise universe movie of all time is Rocky. What's your Rocky? Uh, my yeah. To recap my list, my number eight is Rocky five. My number seven is Rocky two. My number six is Creed. My number five is Creed two. My number four is Rocky Balboa. My number three uh, is uh, apropos Rocky three. My number two is Rocky, and my number one is specifically the director's cut of Rocky four. Now you kind of teased that earlier, but where would the the theatrical cut be? For Rocky if II? if I had not seen the director's cut. Um, it would probably rank, honestly, maybe around six or seven, okay. probably so we, so something there. Speaking, maybe other than my my yeah. thoughts on Rocky Five, we pretty much have the same list, just with two swaps. Like there's very no similar, yeah, different other than Rocky Five. Yeah, so nothing. I, I feel nothing like this, super this, was a, this was a great you know topic to start off on for this show. Like mm-hmm. we're going to rank stuff. And, you know, obviously, you know, I feel like out of all of them, this might be the longer version of them because of just the passion of the Rocky franchise. But I feel oh, like sure, you know, yeah. we, we covered a lot until of we get there. until we do the, the Saw franchise and we have to get into the minutia of all the plots going on in those movies yeah, and I'll all the crazy, you know, I'll be, ready for that. You know, I'll be ready. I'll fucking go back and binge them all. I don't care. <laughs> like uh, I'll, so, I'll just watch all the crazy continuity. So, so that, that's a good tease. So, uh, like, I, like I said, the, the yeah. show's called let's rank stuff. Cause we're just going to rank 
rank a bunch of stuff. We're gonna start off with our favorites, just kind of develop the, the the core between us, our chemistry, the concept, obviously the format. We'll we'll tighten it up a little bit, but uh, so the the things that are on the table, no in no specific order. Quinn Tarantino, uh, filmography. Christopher Nolan, filmography. Martin Scorsese, filmography, because we both want to have an excuse to finish his filmography because we have a couple gaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Saw franchise. Is there any other ones that you on top of your head? You're like, I, I, I really am passionate and I run a. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm very passionate about a bunch of horror stuff. I know you're not as passionate about horror as I am. Other I've than seen some almost of those all of the things. Friday the 13th. So that would be. Yeah, know, we, we could do that eventually. Um, but you know, <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to think with, like, with we're not... the, uh, the new screen movie coming out. That could be a, a fun one. Yeah, we could, we could do the screen ones after that one comes out. Yeah. Um, we could talk about the matrix franchise. Maybe after that one comes out, I could, and, we could and, definitely and talk about it. If you that notice, one. that's why I have the show called let's rank stuff instead of having an order because who cares? Let's just, whatever we want to rank. If it's a four movie franchise, yeah. you want to you rank the Godfather trilogy, the Lord of the Ring. You know what I mean? Let's just rank stuff. Who cares? Do you know what I mean? We could, we could go oh, back yeah. and do Edgar Wright because of a, you know, or last when last night Soho drops on digital, we can do that. Like you know, whatever we want to do. So you know, we can it, rank the '80s and '90s Batman movies, the '89, '92, '95, '97. Like, you know what I mean? You know, like whatever we want to do, the Superman movies. You know, whatever we want to do, like we absolutely. Can rank so we want uh, and just and just have fun with it, man. So yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So uh, anybody, if you made it this far in the video, or if you're you know you're watching it, you know you stumble upon it as a Rocky fan, let us know uh, your your specific uh, Rocky rankings in the comments below because obviously me and him are you know fairly similar, but you know we have in, enough differences that. I feel like, you know, we will be interested in other people's opinions because, you know, obviously no one has mm-hmm. the same exact opinions as us. Uh, and then comment below different suggestions of stuff you want to hear us rank because, you know, it could be, like we said, anything. Anything's on the table. Go ahead and uh, let us know. And uh, We're not limited by numbers. We're not limited by, you know, genres, you know, whatever. Nothing. Like we can do whatever, you know, we're not doing – Be creative not just a want. top 10, top 12, whatever. We can – yeah, we could rank – you could give us 10 – you know, random movies and just be like, Hey, would you guys want to rank these movies? I don't know. <laughs> like we are, or maybe they all have like one common actor in them or something. And it's or like, here's this that could be, actor's that could be movies. something dumb. Put, put your top 10 favorite movies of all time. And we'll rank that. We'll rank those in the we'll order that we want. Like we'll just have some fun with it. Who cares? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Um, let it, like I said, uh, on the channel, if you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we also have the the confidential roundtable podcast, which Austin is a you know a current member, a reoccurring member on that because we just have a lot of fun talk about different movies for an hour. Uh, there will be trivia has turned into a, a you know a random live you know just I'm going to talk about you know trivia with people and then eventually the war room will start up where you know kind of you know talk about debates and stuff. So uh, with that said. Like I said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do and put on the no- um, post notification because, you know, I like to drop randomly with these live videos just depending on, you know, when I can get a panel and shows like these, you're definitely going to you know watch it right away because they're a little longer form. So you want to, you know, have them ready to go and watch them. So with that said, I am Henry Confidential and you are. I'm Austin Pez. How old? And, uh, you know, this is where we rank stuff. Peace out, guys. See you.